Hi there, friends. My name is Brent. If we've never met before, I'm a productivity and flow state coach. A lot of things to open with. Uh, would you hit the like button if you've gotten any benefit from anything we've done so far? Subscribe if you have not already subscribed. And also, you may want to consider getting coached. So you'll see links below. Um, I offer coaching, a one-on-one -on -one coaching service. If you're curious about it, there's a link. Uh, you can always trial a session without any expectation or obligation attached to it. And then I'll be able to get a chance to coach you and learn about you and support you. And then you can learn about the ongoing stuff from there. And, uh, and that is the stuff for now. I'm going to open now with a few questions. And I'm going to ask these questions in a way that it's not totally clear where the answer is, but it's just to set the table for what we're doing. It's just really to uh, calibrate the energy, we could say, in just the right way to get the maximum benefit, to squeeze the maximum amount of juice out of this time that we now have together. So there's three questions. Number one, what possibilities are available now? So again, no need to answer right away, no need for the ego to contract on the question. Instead, we hold it in an open way. What possibilities are available now? Number two, what can be created now? What is there to be created now? And then number three, what new levels of mastery can be reached? I invite you to consider yourself to be a master, to be a creative master. If you step into it as a label and play with it, then you can unconsciously tune yourself into that experience and have the experience of being a master. There's going to be a major theme as we go into this talk of being that, of closing the gap of looking at where we tend to position obstacles between ourselves and what we are creating, what we're hoping to become, what we're hoping to get, what we're hoping to do. And there's great benefit at looking at where we artificially and needlessly place obstacles between ourselves and that thing. And by removing that obstacle, we can step directly into that thing, be that thing, have that thing, become that thing. When we do this, it still may be the case that some time needs to pass before it actually shows up in our lives. But unless we do this, then we can run the risk, and we often do run the risk, of suspending something from ever appearing in our lives ever a certain result, like say, you know, losing weight, you know, how many of us have been talking about losing weight <laughs> for years, <laughs> for years, for years, right? And it never actually happens. So this is what I mean, like a sort of result or a form of success being permanently suspended in the future. We're going to talk today about reversing that thing. And it's done by being that. We're going to be weaving together a handful of different ideas. You'll see me looking down because I'm referencing my notes down here. We're going to be weaving together a handful of ideas. And one of these ideas is this, is to stop hovering over your life and dive in. So with it comes a story. I'm going to share a story with you. Uh, over the last weekend, I went to Toronto with my wife, Jessica, who is a food writer. She writes for food. She writes on restaurants, on drink. And she had this one article to write recently about restaurants that turn into clubs, you know, later on at night. And we were to go to these, to four different locations uh, after, after hours, you know, like after say 8 PM and check them out so that she could do some research and, you know, do a vibe check and write about it. So that was pretty cool. So we got a hotel and we kind of made a whole night out of it. And we were really looking forward to this because it was going to be really fun. And when we got to the first one, uh, we both noticed that it was difficult for us to really relax into it because we were thinking about the three other reservations that we had and we needed to make sure that we don't spend too much time in one spot and, and we have to do it just right. And, you know, perhaps we have to worry about ordering the right things so that we can write the article properly. 
And so this night that we had been anticipating since two weeks ago, it finally came and we were in the night, we were in the evening, it was happening. And, and here we were just in a planning mode and it became clear to us that we might risk spending the entire evening in that planning mode. So we're just focusing so much on trying to, to actualize the night that we don't actually end up experiencing it. We, there's no moment where we actually give ourselves over to it. So what happens with a lot of uh, major events, you know, like weddings and this kind of thing. And so this was kind of interesting to both Jessica and I as we were talking about it. And we made this decision of, okay, let's give ourselves permission to really dive into the evening, to really give ourselves over to the evening and really experience it. And then when we considered doing it, there was this fear that came up naturally of, of, you know, hey, what if we miss something? What if we screw it up? What if that, what if a night ends up being less than it otherwise could have been? And, um, and then it turns out to be a disappointment of some kind, you know, that wouldn't be so good. But in the end, we decided that we can try it out. We can try giving ourselves over, just like releasing all of this sort of planning energy and just start enjoying the thing. And if it looks like we're heading in a bad direction with it, if it looks like we're getting, you know, say sloppy or we're about to miss uh, our time, then we'll go back to the old way. So we thought that sounded good. And then as you can probably expect, we we gave ourselves over to the evening. We just relaxed. We grounded in. We slowed down. We you know, kind of centered ourselves in our breath and we just began enjoying the evening. It actually made the evening very magical. It made it very enjoyable and sort of a unique one-off experience. And, and it would not have been had we not made this decision. So, of course, this was a very profound thing to think about. And, and I kept turning it over in my mind for a long time after because this is the sort of thing that applies on micro and macro levels. So this applies on micro levels, say in any given moment, any given hour, you know, you're working on something at work or you're hanging out with somebody or you're, you come to the end of the day and you're, you know, maybe watching TV, but you're in a state of agitation, or maybe you're working out at the gym, but your, your mind is elsewhere. And then also it applies on the macro level. It applies on the level of our lives where we are going about our lives, but we are hovering above our lives and feeling like there's, it's not going in the right direction, uh, having a fear that we're doing the wrong thing, that we're living in the wrong way, that we're wasting time in some way that we're not um, living our lives as fully as we possibly can. You know, these are different ways of coming at it. Something I've also observed in a lot of clients that I work with, a lot of clients that I work with, is that many of us feel like we are in the waiting room of life, where there's this sense of waiting for life to be the thing that we want it to be, waiting for the real experience of life to come on. And in the meantime, it's just like waiting for the conditions to fall into place. So that's the first major idea. Anywhere you're hovering over your life or in the waiting room about your life or holding yourself back from life in some way, the invitation now is to dive in and to practice, even if just for a day, releasing the holding energy that you have over it or this holding back energy, or this, or this sense of like, you know, waiting, you know, for the right conditions to line up, to release all of that, and to give yourself over to, an, to it now, and allow this to be it. And you can do that by affirming out loud, this is it. This is it. And notice the, um, like, the, of course, ego feels a little fear around saying it, but then you bypass the fear, and just, and just, you just fall into it. It feels very satisfying just to say, this is it. This is it. This is it. Now, last week we were talking about power and we were talking about giving ourselves permission to use our power and how we can use it not in the form of force where we say we go out into the world and we try to force a result or we try to make something happen, which is very um, excessively masculine and excessively egotistical and tends to create karma and excessive damage you know, as we go about it. Instead of force, we use our intention. 
the power of our own intention. And we do that by saying, I intend for blank to happen. I intend to create this, this, or that. And then when we say, I intend, there's a sort of a lightness around it where we may not know exactly how it's going to happen and we don't know a lot of the details, but yet there's a firmness as well of like, and, and there's an application of will there, like, yes, like I intend to make this happen. I intend for this to be a success and so on. So the power of our intention is found when we are inside the stream, when we are in the flow, when we release the waiting and holding back pattern, when we're in, that's where our power actually is. And that's where we can allow our intention to, to take root and to pick up its own momentum. So like from the ego standpoint, we say, okay, like, ah, like I, I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to give up and give in. And I'm not ready to say this is it because this can't be it. Like, you know, I, I still need more. I don't have enough. I'm not there yet. But when we attempt to create from the psychological place of not yet, not yet, not yet, then what we're doing is we're rubbing up against difficulties. We're in a reactive sort of psychology and there can be no power that comes from there. That's why life always feels like just difficulty after difficulty, obstacle after obstacle. And so, and so, it's a very interesting thing to really see and experience when we dive into life, when we give ourselves over to life. We don't, contrary to what the ego says, we don't just become stupid or idiotic or weak or passive, but instead we become very, very powerful because now our intention has actual thrust behind it. A question that I also want to ask here is, where do you cancel out your creations? Where do you cancel out your creations? Something that I used to do a lot was I have a, an email list and I would have this idea of an event that I wanted to create. So I'd create some sort of Zoom event. Hey, we're going to talk about you know X, Y, or Z topic and you know here are the results that we're going to create and here's why it's going to be amazing and why don't you show up and here's the date and time. And I would be really, really excited when I would send out the invitation and make up the event. But then when it came time to actually have the event, I would get into a state of nervousness like, oh no, like, wait, hold on. What do I say? What do I do? I don't know what to do. And of course, that's a lie because I did when I issued the event. It's no different now when the event's, event's about to take place. But what I was doing was I was canceling out the energy. I was contracting around the energy of the creation and refusing to allow it to create for me. Uh, so that's one way of canceling out our energy, creative energy. Another one is talking ourselves out of something and talking about ourselves in ways that diminishes our creative ability. For example, I have a friend who uh, does and creates a lot of things. And when he does, though, he will always say, he'll say what he was about to create. And then he'll say, but of course, I don't expect this to be amazing. Or of course, I don't expect this to be a really big thing or to create a lot of success for me. You know, and, and you know, he does this in the name of modesty and in the name of taking the middle road and not maybe being too egotistical and thinking too much of himself. But then what I'll notice is that he will, he will cut off the energy of what's possible. He will sort of kneecap it so that whatever is possible, instead of getting that, we're only going to get about half of that, which I thought was really interesting. So, what a lot of us do when we start, say, a business or a creative endeavor or some sort of art project is, is we'll, a lot of the time I hear people speaking about these like, you know, this may be nothing or like this probably won't amount to anything large. And even though statistically, you know, like few things go like crazy viral and most things don't go really viral, it's, it becomes much less likely that things will go viral if we conclude that they won't. And so the key whenever we create something is to keep the energy open and to stop closing off the possibility and instead root back into this question of what possibility is available here? What is possible? How far can this go? How much success can this create for itself and for me? How good can this be? 
and, and staying in that open space instead of closing it. Another way that we cancel out our own energy is by putting ourselves on other people's paths. This is something I fell into too, where we want, say, to create success for ourselves and we see other people who have created success for themselves in a similar way and we try to emulate them. So say you want to be a musician and you look at the paths that other musicians have taken and you think, okay, this is what I have to do in order to become successful like them. But when it comes time to actually do it, you're actually emulating somebody else's journey and trying to do things that don't feel correct for you and don't create success for you, but you're just convinced you have to do it that way because that's how it has to be done. This is you canceling out your own energy. So where in your life are you canceling out energy? Where are you canceling out your creations? Where are you assuming that nothing's going to work? Where are you assuming that no success can be had? Where are you assuming that no change can be made here? Where are you making assumptions that you're stuck? And look at all of these foregone conclusions that you have about yourself, your life, your work, your creations, and clear them. So look at them, give yourself permission to detach from them. They're not real, they're not true, they're just figments. They're just creations. They're just ideas. Detach and allow them all to be destroyed and uncreated. Watching them in your imagination as they just float away, back to source, back to the source of their origin, back to wherever they came from. Saying to yourself, one, two, three, release. Set intentions and keep the energy open. That's what I'm doing now. So talking with you now, it feels a little bit different than from how it usually does because there are deeper levels of creative power that I feel are possible in these videos and in these talks, but I would typically close them off too. And this is kind of interesting. Here's another reason. I would close them off because it felt like if, if I allowed what we're doing here to become too deep and too profound and too intense and too energetic and too healing and too real, if I allowed that, then there would be a sense of it being ostentatious, which is a fancy word for being overly showy, like too much. Like a like a like a, a bite of rich dark chocolate cake that's mostly icing. It's like ugh, too much. And so since then, and since recognizing that, I've granted permission for this video to be profound, and for the energy in this video to be profound, and for it to be an in, like not to create results for you because I don't believe I can create results for you despite my best intentions, but to create a space for you, a resource for you, an energy for you that you can draw upon and draw from in ways that are most appropriate for you. As an example, I view even this talk not as some sort of, not like not a bunch of words, but as a living, breathing, energetic system that is that will show up for you in different ways. If you come back to this video later, it will be different for you than it is now. There's a living, breathing quality about it. Part of my reluctance and what I've observed in other people, their reluctance, part of everyone's reluctance, to hold the energy open, the energy of possibility, the energy of transformation, is that it would mean us meeting in this space. It would mean me seeing you, looking at you and seeing you, and you looking at me and seeing me. Most of us are unwilling to see and be seen. Why? Because we either don't view ourselves or don't view others as worthy of it. And thus, we apply a holding, waiting pattern on even this.
And you can see it's the same thing. If I feel like I'm unworthy of being seen, or I feel that you're unworthy of being really seen, it's still the concept of worthiness at its core. The belief in this idea of worthiness. And this belief in the idea of needing to earn our worthiness to see and be seen. To, be, to understand and be understood. There's so much emancipation power. There's so much healing power. There's so much liberating power in a willingness to see and be seen. To be understood and to understand. It means that we don't have to play these roles of being other to each other. And we can see through this experience of perfect seeing and perfect understanding that we're not actually different. We're not different. So your power is found in the stream and not outside. You give yourself permission now to be the master. You declare, I am the master to yourself. Don't do it online like I am. And that way, the experience of being the master comes through. You say, you say to yourself, you say out loud, you declare, this is it. When you declare this is it, anywhere you're chasing in your experience, and, and the chasing can be so subtle. I've been talking about the chasing experience for years, and I still discover it in myself. Like, I'll, for example, I'll make something, and I'll look back on what I made, and I'll be like, mm, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. And I cancel out the creation. That stops now. This is it. This is what I mean to say. This is what I intend to create. This is the energy I intend to open up. This is the one that does it. I allow the message of this video to hit its mark. I allow this moment to be complete. I allow myself to be complete. This is it. Another way of putting it is I am that. I am that. And the that that we're referring to is the thing that we've been looking for, chasing for, or waiting for, or attempting to manipulate toward, or trying to make our way to. <laughs> we're trying to overcome difficulties or obstacles to get to, right? Passive or active. Actively chasing, passively waiting. This is that. I am that. Here's another one. It's happening now. It's happening now. What is the thing? The thing that can't be reached, the, the thing that can't be found, the thing that evades your grasp, the thing that's always coming but never arriving. It's happening now. And so this is a, an energy that we practice, that we attune ourselves to. And as I, as I conceded in the earlier bit, there still may be time because, you know, if, we're in, if we've been practicing this mode of searching and seeking and waiting and hoping, then, then that momentum still has its own energy behind it. And so there may still be time. So it's not, I'm not, for example, claiming that just by saying this is that, or I am that, or I intend that like everything comes at you all at once. And here, here 
we can arrive at a much richer and much deeper understanding of divine timing. Because it would be a mistake to approach divine timing like, okay, if it's all divine timing, then I'm not going to create anything. I'm not going to use my power. I'm not going to intend for anything. I'm not going to move energy. The gears of divine timing turn as we cooperate with it on a personal level. So on one hand, we can't, or we can't from a smaller personal ego level, manufacture divine timing or make results that are not going to happen. But we can create results that are going to happen. And those results are for us to create. As we work with these affirmations of I am that and this is it, <clears throat> allow all polarity and duality to collapse. Making these videos, for example, half the time I think, oh, this is just going to be a freewheeling, totally improvised, uh, extemporaneous discussion. And then the other half of the time I think, oh, no, this is going to be planned out and like, like right down to the, the line, I know exactly what I'm going to say and when. And then when I do one, I think, ah, maybe I should do the other. And I do the other, I think, ah, maybe I should do the one. And so I'm chasing. So allow polarity and duality to collapse, to be reintegrated. It was always an artificial polarity. There was no need for it to be polarity. The polarity between personal will and divine will. Between effort and relaxation. Between absolute importance and relative importance between becoming enlightened and creating material success permission now for all of this duality and polarity energy to collapse so that you can just be that drawing upon all of these resources spontaneously as you need them and not having some sort of affinity toward one as opposed to the other. This is it. This is it. It's happening now. I am that. Enjoy. Leave a comment. Let me know how this feels. Head over to my website. Sign up for my newsletter. Get the talk that's called Seeding New Realities. You will absolutely love it. And you will receive my monthly newsletter. You will love that too. Check out my coaching page. If you haven't checked out my coaching page, and if you haven't tried out getting a session with me just yet, you're missing out. I've been working with some people for years and we're just creating success after success after success. It is powerful and amazing stuff that we do. And if you've ever been interested, give it a shot. Book yourself an intro session. Meet with me. Let's talk. It's very, very cool. Thank you for watching.